For me, one of the most exciting things about this 10 millimeter F2 lens is that it can be a cheaper, sharper, and better low light alternative to Fuji's own 10 to 24 millimeter zoom lens. Now, I mainly bought the 10 to 24 millimeter zoom lens for that 10 millimeter, for that super wide focal length. But there's a couple challenges with that. And one is this lens is pretty much at its worst at 10 millimeters. And two, you're only sort of at f4 as far as the aperture goes. So that doesn't let a whole lot of light in. So based on the way that I use the 10 to 24, this 10 millimeter f2 lens is actually a much, much better lens for me. And it's only around half the price. Now, because 10 millimeters is so wide, it's actually an incredibly versatile lens because you can just get so much information in. So it's a great landscape lens. At f2, it is a great astro lens. It is a rectilinear lens, which means that the lines are relatively straight. And in lens, they have tried to correct for sort of barrel distortion. So you can use it for architecture or real estate or cityscape, and it could also be used for vlogging as well. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that you could use this lens. In full disclosure, this lens was sent out to me for the purpose of making this review, but it has already replaced my 10 to 24 millimeter in my lineup, and I'm pretty much using it every day in situations where I would have been using that 10 to 24 millimeter. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice when you take this lens out of the box is the incredible build quality. This is an all metal lens. It has a metal lens mount, a polished metal lens mount. And it even has like this really kind of interesting filter thread or filter setup. The, the lens gets quite wide, which allows you to use a flat filter on a lens that otherwise would not be able to, because as you can see, that front element is extremely bulbous. So it is a 77 millimeter filter thread and they've just moved that out so I can put that filter on and I'm not getting any vignetting or any problems like that. So I think that's pretty clever. It also has a very well dampened aperture and focus ring. I wish that the aperture ring was clicked. I also wish that the aperture ring was a little bit stiffer because I did find at times when using the lens that I was sort of bumping it and I was changing the aperture and it was something I was going to have to just keep checking on to make sure that I hadn't screwed up my aperture. So that is one little niggle that I had with the lens. But overall, the build quality is excellent and I have absolutely no problems with that. It comes with a push on lens cap. And at first I wasn't sure about this because I've had these before that just seem to fall off easily. But I mean, this thing just stays on there. I mean, it goes nowhere. It's never come off in my bag. It's never come off in the camera. So I am super, super happy with that. As I said at first, I was a little bit unsure, but yeah, it's absolutely bulletproof and it is quite satisfying to take on and off. It fits really nicely. Now this lens is a rectilinear lens. Now that means that the lens itself has elements inside that correct for the typical curvature that you would get in a wide angle lens of this type. That makes it very good for any situation where you've got straight lines like architecture, real estate, interiors, things like that. It also means that when you're using it for landscape, you're not going to get a sort of bulbous or curved horizon. You're going to get a straight horizon regardless of where you have it in the frame. And the only place you're gonna really notice some sort of curved distortion is at the very corners of the frames. And in most situations, you really won't notice this. And in fact, I didn't really know it was happening until I actually took a picture of a brick wall sort of just or a tiled wall just trying to figure out if there was any curvature and what you'll find is you do have some curvature at the corners of the frame and through the center of the frame you get a slight bit of what they call mustache distortion where it sort of goes down and up and back down again but this is really only noticeable if you are looking for it and sort of taking pictures of sort of lines like this even if you look at sort of my cityscape shots and the different shots that have lots of straight lines in it, you really don't notice it unless you're going out of your way to kind of expose that. And this is not unusual of a lens of this type because when we are at 10 millimeters, we are grabbing so much information out there and bringing it in. It is very difficult to keep those lines straight. And I think particularly at this price point, they did a pretty good job of it. And what I will say is in Fuji's own 10 to 24 millimeter, at 10 millimeter, there is quite a bit of distortion, but that lens has corrections built into the camera that is sort of 
sort of correcting those distortions. And the result of that is you don't see as much curvature as when using that lens as you as the lens is actually giving the camera. There's more curves than what you're seeing. But when they sort of correct that distortion in camera, you lose some sharpness and detail. And that's why in that lens at 10 millimeters, you're getting sort of a fair bit of loss of quality of the image because it's doing a lot of distortion correction in camera. Where this lens is doing its distortion correction in the lens optically because it doesn't talk to the camera and there are no sort of in-camera corrections for this lens. And overall that is going to generally give you a better image quality. And one thing you will see in any wide angle lens, particularly once you get to 10 millimeters, is something called perspective distortion. And perspective distortion isn't sort of undesirable or a bad thing. It is just a feature of extremely wide lenses. And what perspective distortion is, is that with a wide lens, the, the things closer to the frame seem much bigger in the frame. And as you get away, the things seem much smaller than they actually are. So this is the perspective distortion. Now, perspective distortion is actually used sort of creatively when you are using wide angle lenses for photography. You can use use it where you sort of get something that's close to the frame and it seems sort of big and fills a uh, lot of the frame and then the things in the distance sort of get sort of pushed way away. So it's a lens that you can use creatively like that. The only thing you have to sort of keep an eye out on is particularly with people, if you get their heads close to sort of the edge of the frame, particularly the corners, you're going to get some weird distortion and things. So ideally, if you're doing sort of pictures of people or maybe even environmental portraits, you want to keep that person, particularly their face, closer to the center of a frame because that's going to eliminate a lot of that distortion. Now, the images I'm getting out of this thing are razor sharp. It is much sharper than my 10 to 24 millimeter and it's probably one of the sharpest wide angle lenses that I have ever tested. And Christopher Frost has reviewed this lens and this is the first lens that he has strongly recommended from this manufacturer and he has demonstrated incredible sharpness through most of the frame. So I think even when it comes to the guys like him who've seen literally probably thousands of lenses, at least hundreds of lenses, he's saying this is a very, very sharp lens and I'm sort of confirming that with my shots as well. And certainly the things that I'm going to be using this lens most for is astrophotography. I have not gotten a chance to get out and sort of do that yet, but this is going to be a perfect lens for that. It's going to be a great landscape lens. It's going to be a great cityscape lens. It's also going to be a great lens anytime you're sort of in tight environments. Like you could use it sort of inside small spaces for sort of real estate or architecture. You could use it inside a car to sort of maybe take a photo of a car, whether it be for sort of selling or just demonstrating demonstrating or sort of even like a traveling vlog. Now, this lens does provide some challenges because of all the information it gets in. And the first thing is trying to compose an image where you can see almost everything is not for the faint of heart. And I, at times, was really struggling, particularly in busy environments, to kind of get some sort of isolated shot that just didn't have all kinds of distracting objects in the frame. So it is a true skill being able to take sort of good photographs and meaning photographs with a 10 millimeter lens. The other thing is this as a manual aperture, manual focus lens. Now, the good thing about this is the Fujifilm cameras have really good focus assist, including focus peaking, which is what I use for all of my shots and all of my videos. And I found that sort of sufficient for my own needs, but it is one more thing to think about because it is not an autofocus lens. The other thing is the manual aperture ring is a little bit easy to bump. And if you bump it, you don't necessarily know that because unlike one of Fuji's own sort of lenses that sort of tells you electronically on the back of the screen or in the viewfinder, what aperture you're on, you won't know that until you sort of look at the aperture ring and see what it's set to. And that was something that did happen to me a few times. And if I was using this for astro or very specific situations where I sort of wanted a very specific aperture and I wasn't going to change it, I'd probably even take sort of a little bit of gaffer's tape and just tape that down so it didn't move. The other thing you're going to run into with super wide lenses like this is you get so much information in the frame that there's going to be sort of big changes in exposure. So you're going to get some really bright spots and some 
some really dark spots. That's just the nature of getting all that information in. So I did find if I was using any sort of the auto exposure settings at all, whether it be auto ISO or sort of auto aperture, I would sort of use the exposure compensation and just turn that down a little bit just to give me a little bit of room to play so it sort of boosts the images, the exposure of the images in editing because it was really easy to clip little spots of highlights here and there, once again, just because you're getting so much information in. Ultimately, I think there's a lot of people out there that would be much better served with a 10 millimeter f2 lens than Fuji's own 10 to 24 millimeter f4 lens, particularly if you're buying it for that really wide 10 millimeters, and particularly if you're gonna end up in situations where you want to be using it in low light conditions, and particularly if image sharpness is really critical to you. Because as I said, that Fuji lens at 10 to 24 is basically at its worst at 10 millimeters. I'll put a link to the lens in the description down below, and if you wanna see a more technical review of this lens, I've just thrown a video on screen now, and Chris Frost has done an excellent review of this lens.